Hey everyone, Ivado Cortez Jr. here, also known as Lance Danger. I'm just here to do the small introduction for this new video series that I'm doing, The Long Road to Hell. Um, it's going to be the making of the comic book that I'm going to be doing that's horror-based, Hell Beneath You. Uh, it's a concept that I thought of about two years ago, give or take, and I was kind of stuck with the idea for it, but I've been able to kind of make a breakthrough. Um, in the time that I had thought up the concept since then, uh, recently comic book writer extraordinaire Scott Snyder actually started a Substack writing course. So I actually signed up for it and I'm going to use it to help me break through with the story writing of Hell Beneath You. Um, the comic, I had come up with the visuals first, actually about two years ago, as I mentioned. It came to my mind, like some of the visuals and after the visuals came, kind of like the start of the story formed. And as soon as I had a clear idea for the start, the ending came to my mind as well. So what's amusing about the Scott Snyder uh, classes is that we have like kind of similar approaches to writing in that sense that he kind of has an idea of how to start a story or the beginning of a story and the end of a story as well. And I'm very much the same, not yes for this particular project, but for stuff like The Mighty Warlord um, never mind the Cannon Girl and all these other projects that I'm involved with, even like the freelance stuff for Project New Wave and Silver Island Studios. I always have kind of like that idea of a beginning story and an end story as well. So there's going to be a lot of that. Hopefully, um, the class will help me kind of break through to, yes, do the stuff that goes in between of going from point A to point B. Uh, in the meantime, if you're interested in the story, the story is a love letter to 80s and 90s horror movies and horror novels, especially Stephen, uh, Stephen King. Stephen King is one of my all-time favorite writers and yes, really one of my all-time favorite creators because he can actually be uh, very diverse with his writing, which is kind of underrated in a way. You know, he can do something like Pet Cemetery and The Shining, and he can also do stuff like The Green Mile. So he's actually a pretty versatile writer in that sense. And I'm not really known to be a horror writer, oddly enough, even though I grew up, literally grew up with horror. Uh, my mother and my older sister were huge horror movie fans. So I grew up in that environment of always looking forward to Halloween and the fall and the horror movies. Although the horror movies were kind of year long around in my household growing up. So I have that kind of unique advantage in that sense. But I've never really done a horror story. There's elements of horrors in some of the projects I've worked in. Probably the closest one would be Delta Task Force 6 or DTF6, my web comic that's more of a science fiction superhero comic with horror elements involved. And there is another short story that I wrote that is mostly horror, but um, that's for the aforementioned Silver Island Studio for their anthology series, Path. But the comic is on a indefinite hiatus right now, so I'm not sure what the status for that particular story is going to be. So the first actual, I guess, horror, horror story that I'm going to be making is Hell Beneath You. And hopefully if you like horror, like along the lines of Stephen King, something in the vein of perhaps Pet Cemetery and stuff like that, you know, I'm sorry, I'm blanking out a little bit. Um, it's been a while since I've done a video like this. Um, this is going to be more or less in the tradition of the 100 days of making comics videos, 
with the exception that I'm not going to be updating every single day. I'm just going to be recording small videos throughout the week of the progress of the comic. And then at the end of the week, I'll upload one episode with um, the things that's happened throughout the week instead. So hopefully that will help me with the workload of, you know, everyday stuff, do, working on the comics, working on my health. Um, as some of you may know, this year has been very rough on me physically. Earlier this year, I actually had COVID and that threw all my plans upside down. Um, as a result of having COVID, I've had other nagging injuries that I used to have actually come back. Um, right now, there is a tendon on my shoulder that connects to my bicep that has a tear in it. So I also have to go through physical therapy for that. Hopefully the physical therapy will help and I won't have to go into surgery to repair that tendon. So that will be part of this journey of this video series as well. So that's pretty much it for this small introduction. Um, I already did the teaser trailer for this series, which I'm going to be calling The Long Road to Hell, because it is going to be a long road to doing this comic. And contrary to other 100 Days of Making Comics video, where it was projects that were already started or that were short or that I was just about to finish, um, this one is going to be pretty much all from scratch because aside from the promotional art that I've done since two years now and just like a small bit of info that I gave about the story itself right now saying that it's a bit more in the veins of perhaps of a pet cemetery then you know you're going to be seeing this pretty much from scratch so I'm just going to go on and read some of the newsletters from Scott Snyder so I can go ahead and start on the plotting of the comic. I hope you all enjoy this different approach to making videos for this and I hope you have as much fun watching these as much as I'm going to have fun creating this comic. Okay guys, um, the website I used to do the music for the teaser trailer for the series of Long Road to Hell is called beepbox.com and as you can see here you can pretty much do all the synth music here you have different instruments different tempos you can just pretty much save it that's pretty much what i did i actually did this on my phone and then I forwarded it to my laptop so I can edit it and I ended it on iMovie as you can see here I just threw together images some transitions some backgrounds titles of course I added some sound effects before and after the actual music I made um, right now the laptop is connected to the XP pen monitor so there isn't going to be audio so you can definitely check out the teaser trailer over right here on YouTube um, it's going to be one of the older videos by the time this one goes up but you'll be able to know hopefully you've seen it by now if not I'll probably put a card or something on this video so you guys can check out the original teaser trailer for Long Road to Hell. Hey guys, right now I am reading the newsletters. Let me just not blind you guys. Um, I'm reading the newsletters from Scott Snyder Substack and taking notes on my trusty notebook. Because of course, if I'm writing a horror story, Dwight Schrute has to be where I have to be taking the notes. Makes me wonder if I would rather be feared or loved. It's easy, both. I want people to be afraid of how much they love me. Mm. 
Well, it's been a nice, rainy, cloudy day here in New York City. I'm just out and about catching some stuff I had to do. Going to the post office, you know, everyday stuff. And now I am going to get some more supplies to work on stuff back at the apartment. It is a new place that we moved into relatively recently. So I'm going to continue working on stuff once I get home. Um, it's the perfect atmosphere, overcast, raining. What a great day to make horror comics. Right now, I'm taking a small break listening to um, Armando's Facebook and YouTube Live interview with artist Jasmine Flores Montañez. Very cool stuff. I'm going to be getting back into doing more notes and... Oh, they name dropped me. Cool. This wasn't timed. <laughs> But yeah, um, I'm going to be working more, taking down more notes and seeing where I go with, um, go with hell beneath you. Um, I usually don't take as many notes as I've been doing with this comic, but this comic is kind of a brand new monster for me, no pun intended. So I just want it to be like the best written thing I've ever done and just try different things as well keeping my mind open to you know to try all these lessons from scott snyder as well and whatnot so i have been showing these teaser images of these uh, characters since i first kind of had the idea for this story but I really haven't spoken about these characters. And I think it's probably time to just shed a little bit more light into these characters and, you know, get a little bit into what the story is about, m mostly. Uh, these characters that you see here are, in fact, a family. You know, there is the father, the mother, a daughter, and a twins as well as the male siblings so it is a family of five they are living their normal lives normal mundane everyday lives until they have a family tragedy and i don't want to talk, give away many spoilers but there is a family tragedy that kind of sets them on this new course and they move out and kind of uproot their entire lives. Um, some of them take it better than others. Of course, there's going to be a lot of family conflict, a lot of family drama in between. That's kind of like the core um, issue in the story, like the core plot of the story. Uh, this family of five that have their entire lives turned upside down by this catastrophic event that forces them to kind of move on which is kind of another theme of this story moving on after something bad happens so they end up moving to this little um inconspicuous kind of town called king kills new york it is a fictional town of course it is an homage to stephen king and kills as you know, kills is another word for river. So that's essentially like the whole kind of tongue-in-cheek, you know, kind of nod there to Stephen King with King Kills New York. You know, at least it's a sleepy town in upstate New York. It's not Maine, just in case. All right, I just wanted to show some of the notes that I've been taking down for this story. Um, I won't be able to show all of them because it is going to be pretty spoiler heavy if I show everything. And also some things are 
kind of sensitive to the writing class that I'm taking online from Scott Snyder's Best Jacket Press Substack classes. And I don't want to be that guy that spoils the things that in the classes for Scott Snyder and for the rest of the paying um, members of the Substack. So uh, I do apologize for that, but I am going to share more juicy details about Hell Beneath You. Just setting some stuff here so I can show to you. As I showed earlier in the week, of course, it is a Dwight Schrute notebook to take notes. And here, I just titled the notebook, yes, like, you know, the long road to hell, hell beneath you notes and plots. So I can, you know, be able to distinguish the notes and whatnot. I don't know if it's going to take up the whole notebook or not. Um, at the pace that I'm going, it probably will. And sometimes when I think of a story, um, aside from the beginning and the ending that pops to mind, sometimes little bits of dialogue actually comes to mind as well. And one of the first lines of dialogue that came to my mind was, only God can save you now. And someone replying, yeah. Good luck with that. And the first time I actually showed that bit of dialogue was when I premiered this image related to the story in a blog talking about Hell Beneath You and talking and it's on the Truthful Comics website. So you can definitely check out the blogs there. I'll probably put, yeah, I'll put a link when I post this on YouTube and whatnot. And as I explained in the previous entry, I uh, have only presented those five characters, which is the family, but this is actually a different character that is not related to that family. He's not exactly a main character. It's a character that's going to kind of come into play later on in the story. But he will be having a pretty big part in that story as well. So I went very noir, very mysterious when I first premiered this illustration for that purpose exactly because I wanted to keep it mysterious and keep people wondering what's the connection between all these characters that are appearing. Is this the same character that popped up in the first image that I presented of the father of the family? Back then, nobody really knew it was a family just yet. So, yeah, I've been dropping kind of little clues and hints in these images that I've done, these promotional teasers, which are kind of like also character designs and whatnot for these characters. And I just want to, like cover real quick here one part here that's going to be like a major spoiler so i have like the list of characters i don't have the names yet because when i write a story especially if i'm creating the characters from scratch like say um fred pearson the mighty warlord or never mind well not never mind but um my sci-fi comic delta task force Delta Task Force 6. Sorry, I can't talk and I'm not going to edit this out. But anyway, it's just the excitement in talking about this because I really haven't spoken to anyone about this. So, when it's my own characters like in Warlord and Delta Task Force 6 and Clown and whatnot, I usually kind of write the plot and the story first. The plot of the story and once I have the plot and kind of like the beats of what's going to happen in the story, when I'm about to write the actual script, that's when I start naming the characters. So, of course, I won't get lost in whatever uh, characters I'm writing. So, of course, the main characters is the 
family of the mother, father, daughter, and the two sons that are twins. Side characters, um, there'll be neighbors, a reporter, vacationers, a love interest, a boyfriend, and an ex-priest. And sus, meaning like, these people are kind of suspicious. Those who know, know. If you know, you know. These people are sus. So, like, suspicious characters, like the mayor of that um, town called King Kills, a priest, a businesswoman, a bully, and that bully's parent. And the list of antagonists, I am not going to go into it. The plot line... I'm going to say the plot line as well because I don't want to go into spoiler territory. But I will go to the tentative title list, which I had put way before. Like when I posted the very first image, I actually posted the tentative title list as well. And of course, for the first issue, it is going to be hopefully an eight issue miniseries. The first issue is called Forward. The second one is I'll Be Gone. The third issue, Roads Untraveled. Fourth issue, Somewhere I Belong. Seventh issue, Bleed It Out. Sixth issue, Lost in the Echo. Seventh, Crawling. And eighth, Shadow, uh, Shadow of the Day. And if you're thinking that that sounds kind of familiar, it's because those are some of my favorite Linkin Park songs. And as I mentioned in other videos and blogs, when I do Warlord or Nevermind or any other of my web comics and comic books, I actually really like to kind of playfully insert music titles into as chapter titles as well, you know, if it actually goes along with the story. So I think that's like the perfect kind of titles for these chapters. If you heard those songs, you'll get kind of a feeling of how this story is going to be like. And if you haven't, then you can go ahead and give it a listen just to kind of get like a sample taste of more or less the tone that this story is going to have. And, of course, more notes here. I'll just go through them real quickly. Hell Beneath You is the comic I want to write for myself more than a love letter to my... Uh, I want to write for myself. Um, it's not just going to be a love letter to Stephen King and horror. It's going to actually be a love letter to my family as well, since I mentioned before that I grew up watching horror like my mother and my sister even though they're not that into it nowadays oh uh, when we were younger like they were all about the horror and they'll like watch horror every now and then and again um actually the last time i <laughs> i visited my mother in puerto rico she told me that i should catch up on the perk uh movie franchise because she's actually really digging it so i'm like Okay, some things never change, I guess. Uh, I guess now I have to start watching The Purge. Uh, confession, I have never watched any of The Purge movies or the TV series that eventually came out. Anyway, so this story is essentially a love letter to my family. You know, I wanted to do the kind of story that if it were a movie or something like that, the three of us would just get together, have our blankets ready, have our hot cocoa ready, and just chill for the night with, you know, horror stuff, you know, which was just infinitely entertaining to all of us. Like, jump scares rarely worked on us. Like, oddly enough, the one jump scare that made everyone jump one time was the classic cat jumping out of nowhere. And what made it even funnier is that it was Halloween night. The three of us were watching, I believe it was Friday um, the 13th, uh, the second movie. We were just watching it on TV. There was a jump scare with a cat. And of course, my mom and my sister jumped. I really didn't jump. I honestly didn't really get scared. 
But a couple of minutes later, after the laughter of the three of us died down after getting scared by the cat, my father actually walked into the apartment. He opened the door and when we heard the door, the three of us actually jumped almost hitting the ceiling like, what the hell is that? Like, we were like so focused on that, that, you know, that happened. So, you know, I guess, I guess memories like that, I guess want to kind of recreate the kind of stories that we would watch growing up and hopefully it'll resonate with people that probably went through similar situations as well with their families or they're having it with their own families right now. And the tone of the series, it's going to be a lot of suspense. I want to build that suspense from the very beginning all the way up to the end where things just go batshit crazy. Uh, kind of think of a mix between Halloween 3 season of The Witch and Pet Cemetery. It's something similar to that. Characterizations. Um, I do want the characters to hopefully be believable. The type of people that, you know, you would encounter in your everyday life. And the protagonist, I want, uh, and the protagonist at least... And, and some of the characters in the first parts of the story. And then as the story develops, there's going to be other characters that will be more mysterious. Some will be like tragic characters and others are just straight out evil. And the plot, of course, is, uh, as I mentioned before, after a family tragedy, a family tries to restart their lives in a new place. But the new place... Maybe more than they had bargained for. And of course, um, this is as far as I'm going to show you because this is pretty much the beginning of stuff that has, you know, that started for the Scott Snyder class. And also there is a lot of spoilers in these notes. I'll likely show other notes that are not as spoilery. And of course, when I do more character and environmental designs and more promotional material, I'll definitely be showing more of that as well. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not sick. I'm just not used to talking this much anymore. But anyway, it's a simple three-act structure, inciting incident, point of no return, all Hope Lost and Climax. That's pretty much one of the things that we're using in this class. Um, it's a pretty universal thing, so I don't feel too bad sharing that right now. But I can't really show the rest because, again, it is sensitive stuff to the story itself. It contains a lot of spoilers and it also contains stuff from the class as well. And I don't want to be that dude that spoils it for everyone else. Anyway, that's enough of my talking for today. And I am going to be coming right back tomorrow to put more stuff in here. So, I did do a few more notes um, for the story. I'm kind of laying the groundwork now for more of the art side of it. I do have some ideas for more promotional art, slowly introducing some of the other characters that I mentioned in the previous uh, entry in this video. And uh, I just wanted to show you guys real quickly uh, truthfulcomics.com where you can go and read the blogs that I mentioned before that I wrote about Hell Beneath You. I am going to put a link so you can read it at, at your leisure later on, but I just kind of wanted to like show you guys Hell Beneath You, how The Shining and Doctor Sleep served as inspiration. That will pretty much tell you um, where I, I got the inspiration from to an extent. Um, you can see other things that helped inspire me, of course, as I mentioned before, and I hope it's not boring you all to tears now by this point. Stephen King, Stephen King, Stephen King, as wacky as that is. Also, I have to watch like more nostalgia critic Stephen King stuff. Like I really enjoy that. This is not pre-promotion from 
channel awesome or anything like that. But again, like here's basically they're not very long blogs. Um, it goes a little bit deeper into uh, what I've been saying to an extent. I am a better writer than I am a speaker, <laughs> even though people will say the contrary that I actually do pretty well when I'm doing public speaking or when I'm doing these videos. And again, it kind of like shows the illustrations that I, I had done up until that point. And this is the first time I actually debuted this illustration uh, back when I did this blog. That I believe um, the date is right there. That was in November of 2019. So as I said before, it was about two years ago that the idea kind of started creeping into my mind and I started developing it. And there is a second blog, which is one of the goals that I had for 2021 with Helbeny Few. Um, talking about stuff that I wanted to do this year. But of course, as I mentioned before, COVID really derailed a lot of those plans. Um, by this point, I had done all that promotional artwork that you've all seen. Um, uh, here I give a little bit more of the plot points of the story and my hopes for when I was going to release it and start production on it. By the way, now that I see that they're Chud, Chud is such a great movie. Uh, to an extent, it also helped inspire this story. And of course, Hell Knight, that's another very cheesy but underrated great movie with Linda Blair of The Exorcist fame. Uh, she's all grown up in this movie. She's kind of like maybe in her late teens or early 20s i would guess maybe early 20s it was just a fun movie it was like one of our favorite movies in the, in our household we actually bought the vhs of that movie uh, we liked it so much as well as chud and chud 2 so yeah, this one was the Hell Beneath You 2021 goals. Unfortunately, again, as I said, I didn't get to hit those goals as with many other things from a, a creative standpoint. This has been like a year where things just halted to a grind because of a lot of things that's happened. But, you know, I always try to bounce back. So again, visit truthfulcomics.com and not only will you see these blogs, uh, you'll also find other blogs from uh, my co-conspirator Manuel A. Carmona, a.k.a. El Kid and a.k.a. K1. You know, so you can check out the Project New Wave stuff. You can check out all the web comics and the stuff we have available for sale right now. And that will be the end of my shilling for right now. Catch you all tomorrow. Hey guys, hope you're having a great weekend. Um, I've spoken a lot about movies and books that have helped inspire Hell Beneath You. But I really haven't spoken about comics that's helped inspire me. So I kind of wanted to just talk a little bit about that as well uh i haven't read that many horror comics to be honest for some reason um i never really got into it like i guess i'm starting to get a little bit more into it lately but there are other kinds of comics that aren't necessarily horror that kind of gave me like that push to do help in if you because the stories were so unique and so indie you know that i really had to you know give it a shot so resident alien this is definitely a comic that made me think about you know doing something different other than the usual thing that i do and it kind of planted the seeds for hell beneath you especially because of the artwork i i just love this artwork for resident alien um, I discovered it actually in Comic-Con a couple of years back. 
I did not know about the comic book. I saw the Resident Alien screening uh, at Comic-Con because uh, my girlfriend is a huge fan of Firefly. Uh, one of the actors that was in Firefly, I believe he was a pilot. I'm sorry, don't hate me, but I haven't watched Firefly, at least not completely. Uh, we are going to watch it together at some point when we have time, but... I haven't seen the whole thing. I've only seen like the first episode. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I'll finish it. We'll finish it together, you know, later on. But anyway, that show, that screening of the pilot episode introduced me to the comic. So, of course, after the screening, I hunted down the vendors in hopes of finding the actual comic and I found it and I found it. I found the first volume. I didn't know there were like quite a few volumes out. So of course I kept buying it. I went to my local comic book shop and got volume two and volume three. I actually haven't read volume three just yet, but I absolutely loved the first two volumes and it did kind of help me catapult that idea of wanting to do something more out there. And speaking of something more out there, the Umbrella Academy also is another comic that made me want to do more than what I usually do. And again, I didn't know it was a comic book really when the Netflix show came out. Uh, it was because of the promotions and all that that I found out that it was a comic book as well. So, again, my local comic book shop, Anyone Comics in Crown Heights, Brooklyn, that's the place where it's at, man. They have helped me track down so many things in there, you know. And even though I could go to something like Amazon or Comixology or, what, or whatever... I really prefer the brick and mortar shops. Like it doesn't replace the experience of just talking with another human being and being able to order things and just talk about it and talk about other things as well. So Umbrella Academy, I really liked the first season, but after reading volume one of the comic, I feel like if I was a fan of the comic, I wouldn't have liked the adaptation, the Netflix adaptation too much. Uh, I really enjoyed the comic a lot more, actually. And because of just that, like, the comic just really goes out there. It's really wild. Like, if you thought that the Netflix series was out there and quirky, oh, you, you have to read the comic. And, of course, I got... Uh, the three volumes, Apocalypse Suite, Dallas, and Hotel Oblivion. I heard that there's going to be another one coming out. There are like already some one shots that came out in short stories that eventually I'll get around to getting as well. But I can't wait for another uh, Umbrella Academy proper story to come out as well. Uh, I know that the Netflix series was renewed for a third season. Uh, I actually haven't watched the second season. I started rewatching the first season just to, you know, get up to speed again in the Netflix universe of the series. And after I finished rewatching the first season, it just, I guess, didn't age as well to me because I think the comic spoiled me a little too much. Which I guess, you know, just speaks highly of the creators of the comic, you know. Of course, Gerard Way and Gabriel Ba. And, of course, Witches, Scott Snyder, again. <laughs> Scott Snyder, Jock. Again, I was introduced to this team in Batman, The Black Mirror, my all-time favorite Batman story, if I haven't mentioned it before. Um, I was actually very fortunate to have both Scott Snyder and Jock sign this trade as well. And Jock's art is just something else. It is just 
freaking amazing. I can't wait for that Black Label Batman book that he's working on to come out. Yes, stunning artwork. And of course, Scott Snyder, horror is one of his strong points in terms of writing. I have followed um, his career ever since Batman, The Black Mirror. After that, of course, I bought the uh, book of short stories that he had written before doing Marvel. Um, well, yeah, he did one Marvel comic, like an Elseworlds kind of Iron Man story. But I meant to say like Batman, New 52 stuff. American Vampire. Um, funny thing is that when I bought the short stories book, Voodoo Heart, I was reading it in the subway and this woman sat next to me and she saw the title of the book and she actually asked me if it was a book about brujeria and voodoo and black arts and stuff. I'm like, no, it's a collection of short stories and we had a fun little conversation until she had to get off the train. So, yeah, you know, Scott Snyder, what can I say? He makes me not be an introvert on trains. So these are comics that are currently inspiring me to work on Hell Beneath You. There is going to be a little bit of elements of each of these comics in there as well, mixed in with the Stephen King stuff and my own uh, personal work as well, of course. Um, the week is almost over. It's been <laughs> very exhausting, but in a way, very rewarding, I guess. Anyway, I am going to cap off this uh, video tomorrow. It is the final day of the first week of the long road to hell. Um, somehow I survived. Um, a lot of reading, a lot of research, a lot of note taking, a lot of brainstorming has led up to this. Um, since um, I moved into a new place, I believe I had mentioned it before in other videos or blogs, or I don't recall if I mentioned it in uh, this video series, but if I haven't, I moved into a new place um, relatively recently. Um, a lot of stuff happened that I wasn't able to accommodate everything in the time frame that we wished it would have been. Um, I might or might not talk about that um, in the following um, episode two when I enter week two of this um, offshoot of the 100 Days of Making Comics style videos. So anyway, that will be, I'll just put a bookmark on that topic for now. And one thing that I was really looking for, which was, you know, packed up in the lawn boxes and during the move, um, I finally found it. And it is Something is Killing the Children. A lot of people have recommended this book to me, this comic book. And as always, anyone comics there to save me. So I got volumes one through three. And, of course, for Free Comic Book Day, I got Enter the House of Slaughter, the Free Comic Book Day issue, which I am really looking forward to reading. Um, again, I haven't read that many horror comics. I have read James Tinian the Fourth uh, material before. Uh, I have read his Batman, and I really haven't read that much else from him aside from Batman and when he would do the Legion of Doom issues with um, Scott Snyder when Scott Snyder was doing Justice League so I haven't really had much experience reading Tinian's work I do enjoy his work uh, he collaborated a lot in the beginning with Scott Snyder, helping him as co-writer as well. So I am really looking forward to reading this. I do believe that it was picked up for a series as well. I don't know if it's going to be Netflix or something. I think it may be a Netflix series or it's going to be a movie. I honestly don't know. I really haven't kept up to speed with um, this comic, but... 
yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to reading it. From what people have told me, it does seem like the kind of story I would enjoy. So I'm going to probably start reading it soon. Like I have a big pile of comics that I haven't been able to read yet since things have been just the whirlwind. World, whirlwind. Wow. I still can't talk. Whirlwind since around August, really. So... I really haven't had much time to sit down and read unless it's just like some things in between train rides and whatnot. So I am going to cap off this week with something is King the Children on this video. Um, I hope you all enjoyed the video for what it is. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to learn to talk with the other videos. Oh, it's been so long since I've been doing these kinds of things it really has been uh part of me actually really missed it because i used to have a lot of fun doing them before i kind of let the burnout get to me to an extent um and i think doing it like this as one whole episode rather than trying to do one episode and then upload it and then another one daily like that, you know, on top of everything else that I've been doing, it, it did burn me out back then. So kind of taking my time and doing the videos and editing, editing it at a later time to put it together and then present it as just one big episode. I think it's really done a lot of good for my creativity and my own mental health as well as to not feel a lot of pressure to do this. So I hope uh, these videos have been entertaining to an extent for you guys. Uh, I will be trying to do better as time goes by, as I get into the grind of doing these kind of videos again. And I know these videos are going to be longer than what they used to be this um, episode I think is going to clock in at around 50 minutes maybe an hour uh, hopefully you guys won't get too bored with it uh, it is going to be a lot of like you know process and showing this and showing that and if you're into those kinds of things then I hope you get something of value from this and if not well I'm doing this for me anyway <laughs> as narcissistic as that sounds but as I said before, and I'll keep saying again, you have to be your own biggest fan if you're going to be your own worst critic. And I am my own worst critic. And I've been working on being my own biggest fan for a while now. And I should be, you know. Nobody's going to like my products if I don't like it myself. And there's, you know, one thing is having a healthy bit of criticism to yourself and your own works. And another thing is self-loathe as well, you know, and I don't want to have that low self-esteem of believing that everything I do isn't good or not of value. There has to be at least a little bit of value, if, especially if so many people have kept reading my stuff through the years, even through the valleys that i've gone through and believe me the peaks and valleys those valleys have been very steep but you know i keep coming back hopefully i'll be able to finish all the stories that i want to tell and maybe some new ones will come along the way like hell beneath you like that's a very recent story idea compared to like warlord and never mind and all the other comics that i've done anyway this is Alvaro Cortez Jr. signing off for week one of this spinoff of 100 Days of Making Comics, also known as The Long Road to Hell, The Making of Hell Beneath You. And yes, to keep the tradition, week one, Flawless Victory.